morning, day two on the Ridgeway, all squared up. Ready to go with me, mate. What's the first thing we're checking out? Some castle. No, Wayland's Smithy. Oh. About a quarter of a mile in that direction. Wayland's Smithy is an early Neolithic chambered long barrow and is one of the best surviving examples of this type of barrow along the ridgeway. Human remains have been found in the burial mound that dates back as far as the year 3550 BC. The Neolithic era was a revolutionary period in British history. It saw a change in lifestyle Communities began adopting agriculture, abandoning the hunter-gatherer way of living. This came about through contact with continental societies. The name Wayland refers to Wayland the Smith, the Saxon god of metalworking. And so the story goes. If you leave your horse with a few pennies at the site, when you return in the morning, the money will be gone, but your horse will have a shiny pair of horseshoes. Wayland Smithy, I'd say that's the highlight of the trip so far, wouldn't you, monument wise? <laughs> well, monument wise, yeah. No. So what's up next, Stuart? Uffington Castle. Are you sure? No. Stuart was indeed correct, it's Uffington Castle next, which I can just make out over here. But beside it is the white horse chalk figure. Trick point. Now the question is, Stuart, are we going to see this white horse figure, or is it going to be a letdown? Let's see his head. We are on this path, just from the fort and the trig point. We think it should be just over this brow. The Uffington White Horse is a prehistoric hill figure formed from deep trenches filled with crushed white chalk. The horse was created sometime between 1380 to 550 BC during the Late Bronze or Early Iron Age and is by far the oldest white horse figure in Britain. If regular cleaning is halted, the figure quickly becomes obscured. Organised by the National Trust, Chalking Day sees volunteers with hammers, buckets of chalk and knee pads kneel and smash the chalk to a paste, whitening the figure inch by inch. Stuart informs me that Dragon Hill down there is where George killed the dragon. And you can make out a little chalky patch on the top and that's said to be where the dragon's blood spilled. At some point we're going to come across the next water source, Stuart informs me, so... Epic views over Oxfordshire. Forts on the Ridgeway, Stuart. Uh, lovely scenery. 
hard on the feet. It's hard on the feet. The body. Nice uh, signposts everywhere, it's well signposted. Makes it nice and easy. Happy days, we just got a taxi down into Wantage, into the cost cutter shop, a few goodies, and then we popped into the Buzz Cafe. Fry up each, didn't we, mate? Yeah, I recommend that. Lovely, beautiful. King Alfred statue, check that out. And now we're back on the trail. The Lord Wantage Monument is a memorial obelisk to Robert Lloyd Lindsay. The first Baron of Wantage, he was also a soldier awarded the Victorian Cross during the Crimean War, who later became a politician and a local philanthropist. Lord Wantage was also a co-founder of the British National Society for Aid to the Sick and Wounded in War, which was later become known as the British Red Cross. He passed away in 1901. Two years later, his wife, Lady Wantage, erected the monument which stands on a Bronze Age barrow overlooking Wantage along the ridgeway. Plenty of uh, wild camping opportunity here. In 2.2 miles, we're going to come across what is it, Stuart? Scotch Hammer Lock. Scotch Hammer Knob, which is a burial site of some. Is that King? Yeah. Supposedly. It's one of those uh, barrows again, I think. So let's go check it out. Absolutely scorching. Whew. Thingy. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see much, are we? I don't know. Let's have a quick look. There's not much left, is there, Brownie? Where are we looking? I think that's it. I think it's, it's just an oval walk. Whatever it was. Yeah. Was down there. Mm. Not much content there. Stuart's just checking out what is coming up next. We don't think there's much. So we're going to head to West Isley. Yep. West Isley. West Isley. West Illsley. The Harrow Inn awaits us. We have taken a minor detour off of the ridgeway, which goes over that way, just so we can uh, pop into a couple of village pubs for some refreshments and get out of this midday sun. It's mile 15. We can just pop in here for a drink. Back on the ridgeway we're heading because we did come off the path a little bit and looking at our maps we've got seven miles to Streetsley which is where we're going to get maybe an evening meal, bite to eat and then look to wild camp somewhere around there. Not much longer now, Brownie. We'll soon be at Streetsley, where we're gonna finish the end of day two. 
which will also bring us at the end of the North Wessex Downs. In the morning we shall be crossing the River Thames, which will send us into the Chilterns. But I think we're both looking forward to a bit of grub, aren't we? Oh yes. So, off to the ball we go. Cheers, old mate. Live it up. Live it up. Live in the Vida Loca. State of well, the weather. Well. Oh man, alive. Right. Woke up to beautiful sunshine. I've just been in the uh, the ball. Bangers a mash for myself, Stuart. Would you have the cowboy burger? Yeah, yeah. that was nice. A few pints. Lovely. Now, Mr. Brown has purchased a poncho. How's a poncho going to fit? Yes, Brownie, turn round. Yeah, that, co that just about covers your back. Yeah, it does, it covers your whole lot. <laughs> Streetsley Meadows, this is marked on the map as. But we're going to pass through this and we're heading for the uh, recreational ground. Should be nice and flat. Get pitched up in there.